Tentacles, Tentacles 1, 2, <clears throat> hello, uh, it's been a long time, uh, we are here uh, in a new incarnation of, uh, of Mean Time, this is not in the Mean Time with Mean Dave, this is a, sort of a spinoff uh, called uh, Movie Mean Time, uh, so, and this is a, kind of an idea of uh, talking about movies that no one really knows about um that people either have never heard of uh people forgot um good movies that uh i think people should notice and take notice of and find today because uh, yeah i'm a big movie fan i probably should have reviewed movies a long time ago but who gives a fuck um i'm gonna start this one off uh with a movie that i've enjoyed since i saw it in the late 90s um I think I saw it on the IFC movie channel when that was still around on cable, um, and it disappeared. It was only released on VHS. It was then put on DVD um, in 2013, I read, but I've never seen a DVD of it. And uh, it's a movie called Bandwagon, not to be confused with the 1953 movie called The Bandwagon. That's a... It's an old movie that I don't know what the fuck that's about. This is a movie called Bandwagon, released in 1996. Um, it was written and directed by a guy named Joe Schultz. That I'm looking at, or John Schultz, that's his name, John Schultz. It was his first first feature film. Uh, definitely is a first film. It feels like a first film, but it's a it's a great first film that got lost in kind of it's I mean just uh, it's one of these movies that I'm like surprised more people don't know about because much like a cult hit uh, that clerks or you know any of those movies um, it was a low a very low budget movie with a mostly unknown cast only one person in the movie is uh, a name actor who um, you'd recognize from films today and that's Kevin Corrigan um, the rest of the cast uh, are uh, fairly n like they might they had some other acting roles and stuff, but they ended up having kind of unremarkable careers, including the director, um, who uh, I think he, he directed the the Honeymooners with uh, Cedric the Entertainer um, and I think Mike Epps or whoever else. But um, he didn't really, and he still works today doing some strange directing here and there. But um, this seems to be like the one movie of his that definitely is a, is a, a passion project and and it's a great movie it's a story about a band it's called bandwagon you, uh, uh one word not two that's where like the bandwagon gets confused and all that but it's an archetypical band kind of of an indie variety um uh it takes place in i think south carolina one of the carolinas but if anybody if you've ever been in a band you could relate to this. Doesn't matter what genre, um, even if you've just made music, uh, it, you know it's definitely more of the the white boy band variety. But it's um, it's still got kind of a lot of universal themes of just uh, kind of the the serendipitous way of meeting bandmates. It kind of happens really fast. That's why it's a movie. All right, it's fiction, but. Um, it has a, a just the way of how these characters encounter each other. Some know each other already. Um, they're just kind of learning that you know who plays instruments, and um, and just the way the movie starts. It's just like this little little snowball that then avalanche turns into a, a bigger snowball and becomes this avalanche of creativity. And there's just a lot of really small, funny, hilarious moments that are very true to true to life, in just having a band if you've ever been in a band um it this is very relatable and if you even haven't been in a band it's also a very entertaining movie just this really cool simple movie um about four uh four characters that you know encounter each other starting with uh, the main character tony ridge who uh ends up being this main songwriter but he's very you know artsy introvert type and uh and then he there anybody who's ever been in a band or been a creative type and been in any kind of creative scene you've always uh you've always felt some level of envy uh witnessing somebody else uh kind of rise to uh to some level of of 
esteem that you just you don't think really is <laughs> deserving of it and they have a band uh in this movie that all of these guys see uh getting some notoriety i think their name was spittle <laughs> and they're uh, they're kind of a, a a humorous uh band to to see in this movie and and yeah spittle's got these very you know arrogant uh, performers in in it and um and so they're watching them getting some acclaim and meanwhile, as these characters little by little encounter each other uh, in their small town, um, they end up little by little forming, you know, starts with two people, then they add a, add a third and they add a fourth and they end up having this band of these unique characters and then um, try to figure out where to go from there. What do you do once you, once you, you know, put together songs and you jam them, what do you do after that? You know, you play a gig. What do you do when you play a gig? Well, sometimes the gigs go horribly wrong and they do in this. Um, then after that, what happens after that? And so it ends up becoming kind of a strange coming of age of a band tale. Um, and they have a wise advisor, uh, this character named Linus Tate, uh, was played. The funny thing is, is all of these characters in it, um, they're very unique and they're played incredibly well for the tone of the movie. It's uh, it's one of these movies where it's, I'm very shocked that no one else really gave this writer director a chance at more auteur films. Um, making movies are, is difficult, um, but I thought he really knocked this one out of the park, and I'm surprised that it's not more on people's radar and. Um, Somebody thankfully last year uploaded it on YouTube in its entirety. Um, it was like the first release of Lakeshore Entertainment when they bought it uh, after it went to Sundance, and it was kind of a popular movie at Sundance. And um, and thankfully, no one owns. I think there's no one has the rights to it or something. It's one of those movies that's lost in obscurity so bad that um, it's remained on YouTube for the last year. It has like over a few thousand views and doesn't look like it'll be taken down so the coolest thing about it is one of the main characters or one of the guys who played one of the main characters in it um he actually commented on the his name's lee holmes he plays tony ridge the main the main songwriter and uh and he commented on the movie itself and uh it was really you know his comments on the youtube things so, uh, i'm happy people like this film it was so much fun to be in work with such amazing people last year 2019 we had a special screening in new york city love seeing everyone and impress the film holds up decades later it does hold up um which is really that again it's one of those reasons why i'm like more people should know about this movie so check it out it's on uh, like i said it's on youtube bandwagon uh, look up Bandwagon Movie 1996. Uh, you should be able to find it easily. And if that gets taken down, the 10 part version is also still available by the guy that uh, uploaded those. And you just got to watch those on his channel in order. And um, it's still still good. But because I recorded it on my VHS cassette and wore the fuck out of it and lost, I don't know where my VHS player went to. I think it's check back for more in the movie meantime to come.